this section we're going to do related rates. These are the easiest of the calculus problems. Let's do what I would call some mechanical ones first. If you are told that y equals x squared and they ask you to find dy dt when x is a 4 and dx dt is 5. Okay, so we are taking a derivative with respect to t. Even if they asked us to find dx dt, the denominator tells us what we are taking the derivative with respect to. The derivative of y is 1, which I won't write, times, it's in terms of y, with respect to t. Why don't I write the 1? Because 1 times something is the something. Equals, the derivative of x squared is 2x. x squared is in terms of x with respect to t. What I like about this solution is it already is in the form of dy dt equals. So all I need to plug in is the x and their dx dt. x is 4, dx dt is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, times 4 is 40. Just take the derivative, plug in the information they give you. That's all you do for these related rate problems. Suppose you were told y is equal to x to the 3 halves, and they ask you to find dy dt when x is, say, 16, and dx dt is, say, 4. So we take the derivative with respect to t. The derivative of y is 1. It's in terms of y with respect to t. The derivative of x to the 3 halves, you bring down the power. 3 minus 2 is 1 over 2. It times, it's in terms of x with respect to t. Once again, they want you to find dy dt and it already says dy dt equals. So it's 3 over 2. Remember, that's the square root of x times dx dt. Well, they tell us x is 16 and dx dt is 4. 2 goes into 4 2 times. I have 3 times 4 is 12 times 2 is 24. Okay. Let us look at the next problem, it's a word problem. It says that dropping a pebble into a lake causes a ripple effect. Let's just talk about a ripple effect for a moment. You have this lake, you throw, did they say a stone, a pebble? You throw a pebble in it, and the pebble lands right where the dot is, and a second later, you see a circle, and then a bigger circle, and then a bigger circle, and a bigger circle, and the circle keeps getting bigger and bigger. Even though my picture may not show it, they all have the same center, all the circles. Now, it says, so we have a circle, and if we talk about area, and we talk about radius, we mean of the circle. Now, it says, if the radius changes at the rate of, whenever you see changes at the rate of, that means derivative. The derivative of r is, with respect to t, is that. The r dt is 2 inches per second. And this makes sense because the change in R should be 
in inches or feet, some distance, and the change in t should be in time. So this looks right. And then they say, find the rate of change of. That's it, that's derivative. Derivative of what? A, the area is A. Find the A dt, what is this equal to when R is 10 inches? Okay, so you look around and you notice that, well, we have an A, we have an R, we have another R. What e an A means area of the circle and R means the radius of the circle. Can you come up with an equation that has the A and the R in it? And yes, the area of a circle is pi R squared. Okay, that's the hard part. You're going to have to know that. Now I take the derivative with respect to t. Take the derivative with respect to t. The derivative of a is 1. It's in terms of a with respect to t. The derivative of pi r squared is 2 pi r to the first, which I won't write, times, it's in terms of r, with respect to t. And once again, they're asking me to solve for what I have on the left, that is dA dt. So it's going to be 2 times pi times whatever they tell me r is times whatever they tell me dr dt is. And they told me that we're concerned only when r is 10 inches, and they told us that dr dt is 2 inches per second. 2 times 2 is 4, times 10 is 40, times pi is 40 pi, times inch times inch, that's inch squared, over second, which makes sense. The area changes. Well, it may be a change from that to that. Maybe it even changed to smaller. But nonetheless, the area here might be three square inches. And the area over here might be eight square inches. So the change will be five square inches. Oh yeah, 40 pi is like five inch squared. Matches perfectly. And the bottom is a change in time, which is in seconds. So there is your answer. All you really had to know was the area of a circle is A equals pi R squared. Let us go to the next problem. They tell us that you are blowing up a balloon so that the radius is changing at the rate of. The radius is changing, dr over dt. How do I know it's over dt? Because they tell us 3 inches per second, and second is in time. And they want us to find the rate of change of the volume. They want us to find the rate of change of the volume. What does it equal when r is 20 inches? This is pretty much what their paragraph tells you. Now, we have a balloon, a sphere, and I see V's and R's. See V's and R's. And you should know that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi R cubed. Okay, so we take the derivative with respect to t. The derivative of v is 1. It's in terms of v with respect to t. This here is a constant. Multiply it by 3 and you just get 4 pi. r squared times, it was in terms of r with respect to t. And once again, it's not always this easy, but once again, 
we want dv dt, and it says dv dt equals. So it's 4 times pi times the radius squared times dr dt. Well, they told us they want to know dv dt when r is 20 inches, and that dr dt was 3 inches per second. Well, 20 squared is 400 times 12. Well, 4 times 12 is 48. Add the two zeros. So it's 4,800. Inch squared is inch squared times another inch is inch cubed over second. And it makes sense that the volume of a balloon will be in cubic units, cubic inches, cubic centimeters, cubic miles, and that dt would be in terms of time. So, you know, I'm not saying that we didn't make a mistake, but what I'm saying is at least we know the units are right. If you got 5,700 inch cube over second, I'd say it looks right just at a quick glance. However, if you said that the change in the volume was 57 square inches over a second, then I would have a question because that's area over a second. You, the change in area over time. You want the change in a volume. Volume is three dimensional and it should have cubic units. Area should have square units. Linear should have just inches, inches to the first. If you get that down, these become, you can check these easily. You, you can tell if your answer at least has the right units. Now, you have this wall. You have this wall right here. Maybe this is a building. This is a building and, hold on please. And here's the wall. And you have a ladder resting against the wall and the ladder is five feet long and you have this person at the very end pulling on the ladder to the right three feet per second a constant rate I'd like for you to try something please take a book use the wall I don't know but let's make this more rectangular Take one of your books. There's your tabletop. The book is on the tabletop. Put your pen here. And try your best to pull the pen out at a constant rate. And maybe along that period, it would look like the top of the pen, that being the top, the tip of the pen will be falling down at a constant rate. But probably about here, it's just going to take off. You're going to see that while it's going down, even though you're pulling out at a constant rate, while the pen is going down, it's going to pick up speed. Towards the end, it's going to look like it's going really fast. Even though you're still pulling to the right at a constant value. Okay. So, the question here is how fast, oops, how fast is the ladder falling down when the base is four feet from the wall? Okay. So, what we have here is the unknown x and the unknown y. But we know that x, we have a right triangle. We know, so that's the equation. We know that x squared 
plus y squared is equal to 5 squared. Now, you may say, but wait, wait, wait a minute. They're telling us the base is 4, x is 4. No, they're not. They're saying at some instant the base is 4 feet. The, the, the base of the ladder is 4 feet from the wall. When the base of the ladder, I hope that was clear. This point here being the base of the ladder. Okay, so the person is walking, X is changing. I know X is changing. They tell us it's changing. And the top point of the ladder is falling. So everything's moving. So we take the derivative with respect to time. The derivative of x squared is 2x. It's in terms of x with respect to time. Plus the derivative of y squared is 2y. It's in terms of y with respect to time. The derivative of 25 is 0. Now they want to know how fast is the ladder falling down. So they want us to find the y dt when x, the distance from the wall, the base of the ladder, is 4 feet from the wall. Okay, so let us solve this for dy dt. Let us bring this over to the other side. Well, that tells us that 2y dy dt is equal to negative 2x dx dt. And now I'll divide by what I don't want. I'll divide by 2y because that just gives me dy dt, which is what I want. And I divide the other side by 2y. So dy dt is negative x over y times dx dt. So there's the negative. I'm going to put in the x. I'm going to put in the y. And I'm going to put in the dy dt. Well, they told us that we're concerned when x is 4. And they tell us that dx dt is 3 feet per second. Now, since it's going to the right, it is positive 3 feet per second. But what is the y value? Well, if you think about it, you have a right triangle. The ladder doesn't change size. You can move that ladder all day long. It's still five feet long. And we're concerned about when x is four. Well, then y must be three. Three, four, five right triangle. You don't know that? Fine, you call it y and then you go y squared plus four squared equals five squared. So y squared is equal to 5 squared minus 4 squared. So y is the difference of squares. So you add the two values, 5 and 4, and then you subtract the two values. So y squared is 9 times 1 or 9. Since y is a distance, it's 3. But it's a lot easier to remember 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So y is 3. And coincidentally, these cancel out. And you get negative 4 feet per second. Okay. Now, is the units correct? The ladder is moving up and down. So yeah, it's going to move a number of feet per second. The change in y will be a number of feet. It moved 2 feet, 4 feet, 11 feet, and the change in time should be seconds. But w what about the negative? That kind of confuses me. Well, think about it. If somebody's moving the ladder to the right, if you're moving this ladder to the right, well then, the top of the ladder The top of this ladder is 
going to be moving down. The top is going to be moving down. Down is negative. Okay, going up would have been positive. Going down is negative. So you very, very much need that negative sign. Okay, let's do another one. You have this point, it's moving along the curve y equals x squared. Okay. And it's moving along the curve y equals x squared so that this statement is true. And they want you to find dy dt when x is 6. Oh, they want us to take the derivative of t. Oh my, how convenient. They gave us their equation. I don't have to know the volume of a sphere or the volume of a cylinder. They told me the equation. So with respect to t, the derivative of y is 1. It's in terms of y with respect to t. The derivative of x squared is 2x. It's in terms of x with respect to t. Oh man, they make this stuff easy. They told me or not told me, we already have dy dt equals. So dy dt is equal to 2 times x times dx dt. Oh, look at this. How easy can they make it? They told us that x is 6, and they told us that dc d, dy Okay, I, I made a little mistake. First of all, if this was really on an exam, if this was really on an exam, what's above it? Find dy dt, you should say five centimeters per minute and move on, okay? Because that's the answer. But we're gonna make it a little bit harder and we're gonna say find dx dt. Find dx dt. So here we don't have dx dt equals. So we have to divide by 2x. This cancels. You have that dx dt, namely the right side, is equal to dy dt all over 2x. Well, they told us what dy dt was. And, they t and the units were centimeters per minute. And they told us what x is, is just the number 6. So we have 5 12 centimeters per minute. And if dy dt was good enough to be centimeters per minute, no reason why dx dt shouldn't be that and the change in x, centimeters, the change in time, minutes. x changes five centimeters every 12 minutes, exactly when x is six. Now, let us attempt this problem. So, you have this boat, the boat's in the water, and you want to pull it into the dock, okay? Let me try to draw this a little bit better. So you have a worker right here. Hey, here's the worker actually. And the worker is, so you have a string attached to the boat it goes straight up into this pulley and the worker is pulling it in. Okay. And the worker is pulling it in at the rope that is not the boat, but the rope, four feet per second. That is, if this, if this is four feet, this length of the rope, well then four feet later, you won't see that green rope anymore. 
it won't be along here anymore. It's being pulled in. Okay, so what is the speed of the boat when there is 13 feet left out? Well, they told us that the top of the boat is 12 feet of, it is 12 feet below where the worker is pulling it in. Basically, you have this right triangle. Let us put it down here. The 12 is constant. We'll call this X. The 12 is like the Y and you have the Z. And this should not be 4F. It should be 4 feet per second. So what is the speed of the boat? Well, the boat's going this way. That's the change in X. Okay. And it's getting less and less. You notice that? Okay. So we know that X squared plus 12 squared is equal to Z squared with respect to T, the derivative of X squared, 2X is in terms of X with respect to t. The derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of z squared is 2z. It's in terms of z with respect to t. Okay. So let us solve this equation. Now they want us to know what is the speed of the boat. The boat is moving to the left. Hopefully the boat doesn't go up to the worker. The boat is moving to the left. Boat so heavy that it's not gonna go up. So, let me just scroll down a bit cause we're kinda done. Divide both sides by 2x and then you get that dx dt is equal to the 2's cancel out z over x times dz dt. Okay, so remember we have the right triangle. This is 12 and they're telling us 13 feet of rope is left out. That's this over here. That's the 13. Okay. This I think is 7. 7 squared plus 12 squared is... Sorry, th th this is 5. You can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure it out. That's how I'm checking it. 5 squared plus 12 squared. That's 13 squared. So that's it. So now we know x, y, and z. X, we're concerned about when x is 5. y has always been 12. And z, they told us, is 13. Okay, so z is 13, x is 5, but how much is dz dt? Since the rope is getting shorter and shorter, if you don't believe that, let's look out here. Uh, so here's the wall. The boat is really far out. The boat is really far out. And here's this pulley. So the rope is that long. A little while later, with a good worker, or a good worker working hard, the boat's now there. Well, if you notice, Oops. If you notice, the rope is shorter. 
in fact, if the if the thing is called the bow of the boat was right here, I can't draw the boat because there's not enough room. This, somehow the boat got a little smaller, okay? The rope's gonna be shorter, okay? Shorter, longer, 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 longer. So this lens is getting smaller and smaller as time goes on. So dz dt is negative 4 feet per second. Mm, that's probably the only tricky part here. It's negative 4 feet per second. So you multiply, I guess that's 52 over 5 feet per second. And it makes sense that x is in feet the change in x is in feet. I mean, now it's 20 feet away, and in, in another moment, it'll only be 10 feet away. So the change will be in feet, and the change in t, yeah, seconds work. So there's the answer to that problem. Now, let's go on to the next problem. First thing I want to talk about is what a shadow is. Personally, as a student, I really needed to think about what a shadow was. So you have a person standing here and you have a light pole. Now, what happens is, and let's suppose it's dark outside or whatever. The light, it will hit here and shine up the street and hit here, that's the street. And here and here. But when it comes here, it can't shine up that point. And when it comes here, it can't shine up this point on the ground. And here, it can shine up this point. And when it hits the top of the person's head, it can shine up this point. But you know what? Everywhere to the right of this point is going to shine up. Now, I just have one comment to make. Let us not give this person 3D. Let us suppose this person is just like that. Okay, so this point will this point will come right here. Okay, so this portion is the shadow. This one, oops, a little bit higher. This one is very important because that's the end of the shadow. Of course, the shadow is going to start right where the man is. He's blocking the light. He blocked this light. He blocked this light beam. It's not going here. But you know what? He didn't block this light beam. It goes there. And he didn't block this light beam. So this is going to be lit up. But this area here... That's the shadow. Okay. So now, it tells us a six-foot man is walking at the rate of five feet per second away from a light pole. Okay, so let us kind of draw this. And from a 15-foot light pole. So here is the ground. Here is this 15-foot light pole, and here is this six-foot person. Okay, that's the top of the light pole, that's the top of the man. Okay, and he's 
the, the six foot man is walking away at the rate of five feet per second. So if we call this X and this Y, but here's the light pole. The man is walking at the rate of five feet per second, five feet per second. But that's dx over dt. The man's walking away. The x is getting bigger. That's why it's understood to be positive, and he's going five feet per second. In fact, that's all we need. The x dt is 5 feet per second. The x dt is 5 feet per second. Okay. And then they say when he is 10 feet from the wall, what is the rate of the shadow? Okay. When x equals 10 feet, what is the rate of the shadow? What is the rate of the tip of the shadow, which should say, moving? What is the rate of the tip of the shadow? So I, I didn't have it right. Now, what rate is the tip of the shadow moving? So basically, at any point in time, that's the tip of the shadow. OK? And the person is walking that way at five feet per second and this distance that's x and this distance that's the length of the shadow that's the shadow so I want to know how fast that tip is moving so we need to come up with some kind of an equation now if you like we can call that whole length L. We can call that whole thing L. L. Boom. Okay, so now we have two triangles. We have this small one here. We have S and 6. And then we have the whole big one. That is the one without that line, the whole big triangle. And that whole big triangle, well, that's L and 15. Well, and they're similar triangles because they both have this angle and they both have a right angle. So L divided by 15. L was between the two angles marked, just like S is. So L is the S as 15. Well, 15 is opposite that angle. So we have this. And like we said, right now we want to know what the LDT is. But for the record, it is x plus s. If we cross multiply, we get 6 times x plus s. And this is equal to 15s. Distributing, we get this, which is 15s, past the 6x's, 6 6s's to the other side. And you will have... 9s's, dividing both sides by 3, 
you have this. Okay. So the way I did it, that there's a slight problem. We don't have to fix anything, which is the best type of problems. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do part B first. What is the lens, What at what rate is the lens of the shadow moving? Okay, and what we know is that 2x equals uh, 3s dividing by 2 dividing by 3 excuse me you get that s is equal to 2 thirds s so the sdt the length of the shadow how fast is it changing this is going to be two-thirds times dx dt. But we know what dx dt is. It's five feet per second. Five feet per second. So we're going to get ten-thirds feet per second or ten feet every three seconds. But not all the time. Precisely when x is, was it 10? Actually, it didn't really depend upon x. So yes, the shadow is always changing at 10 feet every three seconds. It turned out it didn't matter that he's 10 feet from the wall, which means x is 10. Okay, now, let us, so this here is, this here is part B. Now, let's do part A. Now, we still have the same similar triangles. So, I am just copying down the first equation. That's all I'm doing. I'm copying down the first equation. In fact, I'll divide by 6. 15 over 6s, dividing by 3, dividing by 3. I get that x plus 5, sorry, x plus s is equal to 5 over 2s. Now, x plus s is the distance from here to here. I want to know how fast that point is moving. So I take the derivative with respect to t. Let me just get my cursor here. Okay, so I take the derivative with respect to t of x plus s. So, look, the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of s is 1, so basically I just get d dt of x plus s. And this is equal to 5 halves ds dt. But I know what ds dt is, I just solved for it. So it's 5 over 2 times 10 thirds feet per second, and then I get 50, oh, excuse me, two goes into 10 five times. So I get 25 over three feet every second. And this here is what I called L. I wanna know how quickly L is changing, which talks about the tip. This completes the video on related rates.